Today, we're gonna talk about where to sell your products in China 2020. Is it Tmall, is it Taobao, is it a WeChat store, or at JD.com? Let's find out. Ni hao, my name is Magnus Detmer, I'm an entrepreneur here in Shanghai, China. I've helped a lot of people start companies here, I helped a lot of people source products from China, and I'm now helping a lot of people sell products here in China. So today we're gonna dig deep into selling products in China. So what we're gonna go through is Tmall, Taobao, WeChat Store, and JD.com, which is the biggest e-commerce stores here in China. So in each and every one of these e-commerce stores, I'm gonna tell you about, okay, general information. I'm gonna tell you what type of products are selling there, what requirements you need in order to start a store at these e-commerce platforms. I'm gonna talk about a little bit how much does it cost, I'm gonna talk about pros and cons, and more general information about each store. So if you wanna learn more about selling products in China, then keep on watching. So in China's e-commerce jungle, there are basically two giants. So you have Alibaba and Tencent, and Alibaba owns Tmall and Taobao, and they're very much focused on e-commerce. Then we have Tencent, that's the owner of WeChat, and they're very heavily invested in JD.com as well. And we have more social and we have more e-commerce, but they're starting to merge more and more. That's why it's really important to, to know the difference between each and every one of them. So let's jump into it. So first of all, let's talk about Tmall. Tmall is Alibaba's biggest B2C store where official stores sell their product. And when I talk about big stores, it's basically big companies like Apple, Adidas, Nike, all these big companies have their official store on the Tmall shop. This is because when you register a shop at Tmall, you actually have to register a company here in China or sell through Tmall International. And there you have to register and show all your trademark that is actually you owning the brand rather than on Taobao where you're basically selling other people's products. So Tmall is for the shops that have official a brand around in the world. And there are basically two different types of store. There is Tmall Classic and Tmall International. And if you start a Tmall Classic, you actually have to have a company here in China. You actually have to register your trademark here in China. China and you have to have stock here in China with your products. If you're selling on Tmall International, you actually have to register your trademark and your company in another country that you already probably have. There you can sell your products and there you have to have stock in your home country, not here in China, in your home country, and then you send it. But there are certain requirements for sending it, so you can't just send it like half a year later. You have to send it pretty quick because people here in China are very used to fast pace when it comes to e-commerce. So what type of products are actually selling on Tmall? These type of products are basically the official ones, like iPhones are of course selling there, all the Nike shoes are of course selling there, Samsung is of course selling a lot of their phones and their computers off of there, so it's actually official stores, official products. So who are the target audience for buying on Tmall? Well, you can basically think like, okay, who are the ones that actually go into, let's say, an official Apple store? Those are the same type of consumers that actually go to a physical branded store rather than a random store on the street. So these are the type of people that buy these products. And 70% of the people on Tmall are between 24 and 32 that are very interested in imported products rather than the local ones like you buy on Taobao. So these are the ones that have the official brands all over the world. And these young people with high purchasing power want these products and they don't trust anyone, they trust only the official stores. These are your target audience. So what type of payment system do they use? Yeah, of course they use Alipay because it's part of the Alibaba ecosystem. You can also buy it with credit card, but usually people buy with Alipay. So you have to have an Alipay account in order to run a Tmall store. So how much does it cost to start a Tmall store? Well, you have to put in a deposit of $25,000. Yes, it's very expensive. Also, when you do that, you also have to pay between five to $10,000 annually to run the Tmall store. And this depends on what type of products that you're selling. So what are the pros and cons of having a Tmall store? Well, first of all, Tmall have very high traffic. A lot of people go on there each and every day. So it's very likely that people will find your product if you have an official, really well done store and that people are looking for the products that you're selling. It is also a very legit marketplace compared to like Taobao where you can find a lot of fakes, a lot of 
yeah, different type of product that you're actually looking for. So this is only for the official stores. People here in China very much trust Tmall. And you also get to expose yourself among other big brands. So if you have a Tmall shop, you're probably on the same page as probably, I don't know, Canon or Apple or Prada, like these big brands, then you gain a little bit more credibility. The negative side of Tmall is of course the high cost, because when you start a store there, it costs first $25,000 in deposit, then maybe $10,000 each and every year to run the store, and then you have to have a lot of development and stuff like that. So it's very costly to have a Tmall store compared to like a Taobao store. So that's one thing. What you also have to consider, just because you have a store on Tmall, it's not like that's the only flat fee that you pay. You also have to do a lot of marketing, you have to drag people in, you have to have some form of like volume on this platform because otherwise you'll be very low ranked. So having a Tmall store is very expensive and also if you want to have a Tmall Classic, you actually have to register a company here in China that I can help you with, no problem, but you have to register a company here in China if you want to have the Classic. The international one, you can do it from home, but I suggest you to do a classic one because if you want to enter this market you have to go hard, you have to go big because otherwise you won't make a lot of money here. So in conclusion I would say Tmall is very good if you have a high budget, you really want to enter the Chinese market. So you should think about starting a Tmall shop like you're setting up a fancy store on a fancy street. That's basically the same way when you do it in e-commerce here in China because it will cost a lot but you can also gain a lot of money if you have a Tmall store. Now off to the next one. Taobao! So Taobao is the app that probably most foreigners here in China uses. Taobao is also under the umbrella of Alibaba and what a lot of people don't know is that Taobao is actually a C2C, a consumer to consumer type of platform. These type of stores that people set up there are actually small companies, one, two, three people setting up companies and they're setting up their stores so they can sell to consumers around here in China. Everybody, I kid you not, everybody in China have a Taobao account. Everybody buy their stuff from there. It's super convenient, it's super good, it's super fast. And you can find everything from like soap to a private jet. Yes, you can find everything on this store. I love it. Right now there's about 10 million merchants here in China that actually have a store on Taobao. So the competition is super duper high. That's why you can find everything there to a super cheap price. And I've heard that it's around 800 million products listed on Taobao. So if you're browsing around there, you probably will find whatever you're looking for. If not, you have very, very difficult taste. What you also have to consider is that Taobao also have started to sell used stuff Stuff. So secondhand stuff you can actually buy there and you can also buy pets on this platform. So basically Taobao is a store for everything. So setting up a Taobao store is way easier than setting up like a Tmall store. You have to register a company here in China but I'll tell you first the seven steps that you have to do when you want to register a Taobao store. So first of all you have to register a Taobao account and register yourself as a seller. Then of course you have to connect your Alipay account to that Taobao store. Then of course you have to verify that you are you through an identity check. Then you have to create your store, connect all the plugins and open an Ali Wang Wang which is basically the customer service on Taobao. Then of course you have to design your store but the limitation of a Taobao store is way bigger than compared to like a Tmall store where you can brand it in a way better way. When it comes to Taobao you can add pictures, you can add text and stuff like that but you can't make it as beautiful as you have on Tmall. Then of course you have to upload your products so everybody can see them. Then you have to do a lot of promotion and marketing on the platform where you actually buy yourself up to the top. And then of course you have to engage a lot of Taobao influencers so they are actually using pro your product, selling your product in order to get engagement otherwise no one will find your product. Unfortunately this whole process and also Taobao itself is only in Chinese. So if you don't understand Chinese you have to hire someone or get help from a company to actually set up the store because otherwise it will be very very difficult. You can buy the service of course where people actually set up your store. However you can also sell your products through Chinese sellers that manage the whole selling process and in that way you can just focus on creating the best product and you leave the selling part to the Chinese seller. 
I would suggest you do that because it's a little bit difficult but of course I have a lot of contacts here in China if you need help comment below or send an email to this and I'll help you set up a store. So what are the products that you are selling on Taobao? As I said before these are not official stores but you can basically find everything and anything on this app. There's 800 million type of products on this platform so it's very difficult to be unique on this platform because whatever you're trying to sell probably, I don't know, 10,000 other people are selling exactly the same type of product. So keep that in mind when selling on Taobao. You can find any type of products there. So who is the target audience? Well, basically everyone. Everyone in China. Everyone that I talk to, everyone that I see in the subway, everybody have Taobao in their phone. So keep that in mind when you're selling product. So what are the requirements? Well, as I said before, you cannot set up a Taobao shop unless you have a company here in China and I can help you set up a company within like 10 days or up to six weeks so that's not a big problem however you have to have presence here and you cannot only have like a post box office where you're selling your products the products have to be here in China you have to have an office and a company here in China in order to sell your product so it's a little bit more difficult and you have to be more presence than like Tmall International however it's way way cheaper and it's not that difficult to set up a company here in China actually. I've done a video here where you can check it out how I started a company and I can start a company for you. So what type of payment do they use on Taobao? Well of course they're using Alipay here as well. You can buy with credit cards, some type of credit card, but usually people pay with Alipay. So setting up a Taobao shop is not expensive. It doesn't cost anything. However since you have to start a company here in China it costs about 20 to 30 thousand RMB to actually set up a company here. So you have to consider that as a cost. Also, when you have set up a Taobao shop, you have to have a bit of a turnover because in the beginning, no one is gonna find your product. So in order to be ranked higher, you actually have to buy your own products a lot. In that way, you can actually get higher volume, then they will rank you higher. So it will come with some cost, also a lot of marketing costs and stuff like that. But actually just setting up a Taobao store doesn't cost anything. So what are the pros and cons of starting a Taobao shop here in China? Well. The positive side is that it's way cheaper than a Tmall store and a JD.com store. It's way faster to set up. You don't have as many requirements. You don't have to have as high volume as maybe a lot of other platform has. And it's an easy way to just test your product. Test if the clients are actually using this type of product, if there is a demand for your type of products here in China. So if I would come here and really want to sell your product, I would definitely start with a Taobao shop and then upgrade to like a Tmall shop. So the negative side of selling your products on Taobao is first of all that the competition is super duper high. Since everybody can start a Taobao shop here in China, you find products that are amazing and the consumer will probably find exactly the same product as you have cheaper and better so you have to consider that why should people actually buy your product because here in china they produce everything so they can probably buy it cheaper faster and better so you have to consider that before starting a taobao shop another thing that i also wanted to mention like the branding opportunity is not as big on taobao compared to like tmall or jd.com where it's more like a customized type of store more like um i don't know a amazon store where you just show your product to the best price and then people buy it if you understand what i mean the cons is also that when people are buying products from this platform it's not as an official store as on tmall so when you're you're buying a product there you hope that everything is fine with this product you hope that it is exactly the one that you want so the consumer on Tmall are way more secure of getting the real deal compared to on Taobao where you sometimes get stuff and you're like what the hell is this just consider that so if we should sum all this up I would say that a Taobao store is very good if you want to get into the market faster and cheaper and just test if your product is actually something that the Chinese consumer wants. I would set up a store there if you want to get into the e-commerce business super duper fast and don't want to spend too much money on it. So if you should compare this to something in the Western world, this is absolutely Amazon where you can find everything super cheap. You're not actually going to Amazon to actually buy a brand, you're going there to buy a product. So if you're selling your product on Amazon, your product will probably go well here in China as well. Now off to the next one. So let's do a little mid pause stretching. How are you feeling? Am I talking too much? You made it all the way here. You're very good at listening. I have to tell you that. Let's do some stretching. 
Okay, perfect. Now let's dig into the next one, JD.com. So JD.com is more of the Tencent side. Tencent is not owning it. So Jingdong is the biggest self-operated e-commerce store in China. It has about 25% market share compared to Tmall or Alibaba. And JD.com focuses very much on delivery and electronic devices. So keep that in mind when you're trying to sell products on JD.com. So why sell on JD.com? Well, is that they have the most advanced fulfillment infrastructure in all of China. It's way more developed than maybe Alibaba's. So they're very much focusing on delivering products super duper fast. And JD.com is actually the one that have tried to deliver a lot of packages with drones. So they are really, really focused on deliver super fast. So it's a little bit of a more high-end type of service than maybe Tmall and Taobao. So what are the type of products that are actually selling on JD.com? On JD.com, you can basically find the same thing as you find on Tmall or Taobao. So who are the target audience? The target audience here is the one that actually expects more from the delivery service. Those that really, really want the product fast, easy, with no problems, then they choose JD.com over like Tmall or Taobao because Taobao and Tmall are actually relying a lot of third parties when it comes to delivery, while JD.com delivers a lot of things by themselves. So they're way faster and way more secure than maybe Taobao and Tmall. So what are the requirements for starting a shop on JD.com? So there are basically two different types of stores on JD.com. There's the international one and the local one. So for the international one, you actually don't have to have a physical presence here in China. You actually can sell your products from abroad. It's a little bit more difficult because you have to register a company and you have to have all the licenses for it, but you can actually sell the products from abroad as well. So when selling a product on JD.com, you actually have to be the brand owner. You have to show trade mark to the platform so it's actually you that produce and you that are selling this type of product so there's a lot of documentation a lot of registration that needs to be done it is a little bit like time consuming but eventually you will probably get there you also have to have a bank account with us dollars so when you're starting a jd.com store you should not actually sell your products in china from the beginning because they will do some research for that so it's better if you're not selling products already in China, you should only sell it through JD.com. Furthermore, you also have to provide business registration forms to show that it's actually you owning the company. You also have to show identifications for all the stakeholders in the company. And when you're starting a store at JD.com, as of course the other one as well, you actually have to provide information in Chinese when you're selling the products. It cannot be in your home language or in English. You actually have to provide a service where the Chinese consumer can actually read it and that is Mandarin. And when you're starting your store and actually selling product, your product actually have to be dispatched within 72 hours after the consumer clicks buy. So in that way you have to be super duper fast when it comes to delivery compared to like the other ones. And lastly, if the consumer doesn't like the product, then the product return center actually have to be here in main mainland China. You can't expect all the consumers to send it back to your home country. So think about that before starting a JD.com store. And because this is is kind of the rival to Taobao and Tmall, on JD.com you actually accept bank cards and WeChat Pay. They don't accept Alipay as for now, maybe in the future they will do, but WeChat Pay in the main payment platform that people use on JD.com. So you have to have a WeChat Pay account. So how much does it cost to start a JD.com store? Well, it's a little bit expensive. So when you're setting up a store and everything has been approved, then you have to put in a $15,000 deposit. It doesn't cost that, but a $15,000 deposit in order to be able to run the actual service through JD.com. So again, this is not a fee. This is a returnable deposit. However, you have to actually put the money in in order to run the store. Then JD.com charges you thousand dollars each and every year from each and every store that you start so if you have the deposit you can start several stores however it costs a thousand dollars for each and every store each and every year and then jd.com actually charge two to eight percent of the order value from your store so you have to add that into the thousand dollars in order to see how much it costs to actually run a store on jd.com so if you're comparing jd.com compared to tmall jd is way cheaper on the international version however you 
you have a way bigger reach on Tmall compared to JD.com. So what are the pros and cons of JD.com? Well, the pros is of course that you can have a cross-border store, so you don't actually have to have a company or a physical presence here in China. You can also reach a big audience since there's a lot of people buying on JD.com and the consumers can actually expect that you deliver super duper fast, you create more of a like a high-end product compared to like Taobao where sometimes you have to wait a little bit longer. However, the negative side is that JD.com is way, way smaller than Tmall and Taobao. So you will not reach out to as many people as under the Alibaba umbrella. It's a little bit higher entrance point than Taobao because on Taobao it's way cheaper to actually start up a store compared to JD.com. However, you don't have to have a company here. So it depends if you want to be in China or if you don't want to be in China. And lastly, these are kind of high end products. So the market is very expensive especially on the platform but also since most people are not on JD.com you have to do a lot of marketing on other social media so the marketing budget had to be a little bit higher in order to actually sell products on JD.com. So in conclusion I would say that JD.com is the biggest competitor and they're aiming super duper much to become the biggest e-commerce platform in China. They really really push these fast deliveries so if you have a product that you want to give super duper good service to the actual consumer you want to deliver it super duper fast and maybe you're selling electronic devices of any kind then I would aim for JD.com. When it comes to foreigners in China, not a lot of people actually use JD.com. However, a lot of Chinese use it. So it's a very, very good alternative if you don't want to start a Tmall or a Taobao shop. Now to the last one, WeChat store. Are you with me guys or are you falling asleep? Let's talk about the official WeChat store. So. As you probably know already if you watch my channel about social media then you probably know that WeChat is the biggest social media here in China. Everybody uses it for communication here, you use it to order taxes, you use it to pay, you use it for a lot of different stuff. What a lot of people don't know is that you can actually have a store in WeChat. So you have an official account and there you can go in and buy your product or if you're the seller you sell your product through that so you can go into the same messaging app as you're sending to your friends and family messages there you can actually go in and buy products. So in that way the target audience for your products is basically everybody that uses WeChat here in China and right now they have over 1 billion users in mainland China so you can reach a lot of people with this however it has some cons as well that I'll tell you in just a second. So what are the products that actually sell on WeChat? Well a lot of cosmetics, a lot of food, a lot of drinks are actually sold on WeChat because what you do is you start to follow all these official accounts where someone is sending that to you. It's very very seldom that you're actually searching for oh I want to buy let's say an ice cream or an iPhone or whatever it is. You actually don't search that in the app. You actually get recommended by someone else if you're looking for let's say a um, smoothie bowl here in Shanghai usually we order it from Lissis and there you click into the app and there you actually buy it from their stores but I find it just because I've already been in there if no one has actually recommended that to me before I wouldn't really look for it and this is way different from Taobao because on Taobao you're actually just searching for the product that you're looking for but on WeChat you're just searching for the store that might sell the product so that's the difference between like Taobao and WeChat store. So what are the requirements for starting a WeChat store? You can start one with a Chinese company but there's no requirements to actually have a Chinese company. You can register it with your foreign company. It will take a little bit longer time. It is a little bit difficult because there's a lot of documentation that needs to be provided. However, it is possible without official Chinese company. So what are the payment systems? WeChat Pay of course. Sometimes you can pay with a credit card but 99% it's always always WeChat Pay that you have to pay with in the WeChat store. So what are the costs for actually setting up a WeChat store? Actually setting it up is free. However, it is difficult because it's a lot of Chinese. So there are three firms that can actually help you set up a WeChat store. So Yosun is one of these providers that can actually help you set up a WeChat store and they charge between 7,000 up to around 30,000 RMB depending on the features of the store. And this they charge for each and every year. Then we have Weidan that's a little bit cheaper than Yosun because they provide not as good service basically so if you just want to go super 
super cheap, Way Down is probably the way to go. And then we have Walk the Chat, which is a very, very good provider. They created the Triva store on WeChat, you know, the watch brand that I made a commercial for in my last video. However, they are very, very good at creating stores. They do it very nicely, it's very easily, so they can actually help you. Go to the website if you wanna know more about how to start a WeChat store that right so what are the pros and cons of having a wechat store well first of all it's super easy to set up compared to maybe taobao or tmall or jd.com super duper easy it's also very easy to find your company because you can just search in the search bar and you find your company another benefit is of course that wechat pay is built into the wechat app so when you're buying a product you just click pay and then everything is settled which is super good when it comes to e-commerce another great feature is wechat login so when the consumer goes in they can just click log in with WeChat so you don't have to put in like email and passwords and yada yada you just click log in with WeChat and you're in the store registered and by that you can also collect the phone number and the email from the consumers so you can actually verify that it's a real person and what's super good with it is that you can actually recommend other people in WeChat to actually use your store so for example here in Shanghai when people are using different type of stores usually it's someone in my friends group that actually send me the link like check out this official account then I click in on it and then it's always in my feed so in that way I always see update from that store and by that as a store owner you can actually sell products directly so the recommendation in WeChat and since everybody use WeChat is a super duper good benefit the negative side of WeChat is that I said before is usually you don't search for products in WeChat you find the store and in the store you actually find the product so for example if I want to buy some food some healthy food I don't go in and search like salad in my WeChat bar what I do is I go into the accounts that I already follow and there I search for it so it's a little bit more difficult to actually find the product but if you can attract the clients to actually follow your account and create a lot of excitement around that account, then you can actually benefit a lot from that because you already have the customer hooked in. Another negative side is that WeChat is kind of a closed ecosystem. So you can't go into like, I don't know, Taobao or Tmall to actually buy the product. When you're in WeChat, when you're sending recommendation, you're always in WeChat. So think about that. So creating a WeChat store is very good if you just want to start off, you don't have a big marketing or starting a company budget, you just want to try to sell your product super fast in China within a few months, then WeChat store is super duper good. A WeChat store is super duper good also if you want to try to see how your consumers react to the product, how they interact with the product, how, what are the requests, what goes right, what goes wrong. It's super good to start off with a WeChat store because then you can test the market before you actually open a big account on Tmall or maybe JD.com. And as I said, even Triva have one WeChat store. So it's not only the small companies that have these stores, it's a really good way to also start off here in China. Whew, that was a lot of talking. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If I should draw a conclusion for all of these stores, I would put it like this. If you are an official brand like Adidas, Apple, Triva, like these big brands where you're selling the brand, not only the product, but where you're selling the brand, and you want to enter the Chinese market hard, then I would go for a Tmall store. If you just want to try out, if you want to reach all the audience that Tmall has, but you don't have the marketing budget, you don't have the budget to actually create an official store, then I would go for Tmall. If you want to reach out to your clients super duper fast, if you want to be more like electronic devices type of company, if you want to be then maybe the next big thing, JD.com is absolutely the way to go. If you're a smaller company, if and you're just starting out, if you're selling maybe local product from your hometown, something like that, I would start with a WeChat store. But that's just a very, very generalized conclusion over all of this. If you have any more questions, please email me here or comment below and I'll help you as much as I can to make your brand successful here in China. My name is Magnus Detmer. Hope you have enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.